and I'm really excited. I am hoping everybody is either watching, watching, either watching or listening, or listening, watching or listening. <laughs> um, happy to be here. Y'all know me, Misha Saffron, Heartstring Healer, working with LGBTQ identified women to restore or create their sense of self diminish isolation and build a community and live with authentic and wholehearted joy on a daily basis. And I'm super excited to have my friend and colleague and um, amazing, wonderful personal empowerment coach for women, um, Risa Gall. Is that how you say your last name? Gall? That's it. Okay. Risa Gall. I, I didn't ask that before and I've, I've never heard you say your last name to be honest. So that was awesome. So I'm going to just um, share my screen with everybody to give a little introduction to Risa. And then I will, um, yeah, I'm super excited. This is great. Um, when I ask Risa questions, you guys, in the um, Facebook group or on the Podbean podcast channel, maybe you could pretend you're Risa or pretend I'm asking you and just go ahead and put your answers in the chat, in the comments. If you're watching the replay on YouTube or listening to the replay in Podbean, feel free to answer the questions um, either for yourself or actually write them in so that I can explore them with you and view them or, um, or maybe when Risa goes back to the Facebook uh, podcast and she can look at the comments and respond. would love to um, have you all integrating with us. So um, again, the channel, the show is, it's got two names. It's Coexistence, Joy, Pain, and the Truth of It All. And it started out as Passing Joy Around the World. And I still, still see that as what we're doing because we do talk about when there is pain and it's really uncomfortable, how do we... Um, cultivate, embrace, and maintain that joy. Um, so today is January 21st, a new day, and I'm super excited to tell you all about Risa. She is a relationship and personal empowerment coach for women, award-winning speaker, and creator of the Be True to You, Getting the Love You Want program. She helps women who are unhappy in their relationships get crystal clear on whether or not they can make their relationships feel good again, or there it can be this way also, if it's time to lovingly release these relationships and be able to move ahead confidently in your lives without regret. As a certified transformational life coach and founder of Full Circle Wellness, Risa has helped hundreds of people over the past 20 years create greater peace, health, and happiness in their lives. And so I am um, delighted to be here. And the, the, the group, you guys in the authentic and whole, you women, beautiful women from all around the world in the authentic and wholehearted joy group are getting two podcasts in one day. And the reason being is that Risa actually has a video training coming up and I wanted you to know about it. So we'll talk about that more in the end of our interview, but I wanted you all to have access to Risa's knowledge, expertise, and compassion. So, um, Risa, hi. <laughs> hi. Thank you so much for having me. Misha. You're welcome. Good to be with oh. everybody. Yeah. We say hello, everybody. <laughs> How are you today? I'm great. Thank you. Good. Happy Good. to be able to share the love. That's right. Absolutely wonderful. And so one of the things that I always tell my guests is you don't have to answer anything if it doesn't feel, if you don't feel called to it. Um, but I also invite my guests to just pause and reflect and, you know, the audience is comfortable with silence. I've had many podcasts where we just sit here and wait for a response. And so I also invite my audience, whether you're a viewer or a listener, to also take that time to really, you know, concentrate on what is the question being asked? How does it feel to you? Um, what do you feel could be changing for you? And, um, yeah, and we'll just uh, see what happens. So I'm just gonna make sure that my share uh, audience um, privacy settings are accurate here. Um, so the first question I would ask you is, um, and asking you, Risa, but also anybody who's listening and paying attention, is how do you identify with the word joy. Actually, say the word joy out loud and tell me where it lands for you. Mm. Joy, 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 joy. 
Yeah, I feel like joy is the essence of life. I feel like it's just our natural state. I feel it really deep in the back of my heart, like like where we connect with the universe. Mm, I love that. <laughs> yeah, I feel it too. And so do you feel that in your life, that joy has, that you've been connected to that joy or did it take work? Gosh, that is such a good question. You know, I feel like I'm learning how to let more in all the time, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, um, yeah, for a long time, I just, um, you know, I just didn't really know how to allow myself to sort of relax and be and I, I think, you know, like it's kind of my life story is just <clears throat> being in self-acceptance and being comfortable with myself. And so, you know, just to be able to, um, to be at home in my own skin and my own body and, um, you know, just be okay with me. And so it's hard to really, um, I mean, of course there's like, you know, when we're experiencing beautiful conditions of being in nature, being with beautiful friends or having beautiful meals or, you know, there's lots of opportunities for conditional joy, but I mean the kind that like I was talking about where it's just that underlying experience of it being our natural state, just like when we're, we're children. And so I feel like I've definitely learned how to be more in alignment with myself and relax and open and just be in the joy of who I am and in life, if that makes sense. Absolutely makes sense. Mm. Absolutely. And I love the fact that you brought up when we were children, mm. because I think you may agree with me that most children, not all children, but from birth to a certain age, there's this sense of innocence and natural curiosity that brings joy easily. And at some point, this may be disrupted, mm -hmm. right? And so it takes a journey of work and effort to be able to realign oneself with that initial joy. Yes, that is the journey for sure. And I have, that's like, I'm working on that all the time. And I don't even really necessarily like the word work because it kind of counteracts the idea. It's I'm more allowing really, mm -hmm. and just focus. It's focusing um, on what in this moment uh, can I, can I think or do that will help me feel good and feel joy and so it's kind of a moment by moment how am I focusing my thoughts and my attention so that I am allowing myself to enjoy life and feel good and access that natural state yeah. I know kids it's like uh, yeah I, I I would like to access that level of energy and freedom and joy more that's why I aspire to be a child <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, I am a child. So you get to, I, I welcome you to come in and play with me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is wonderful to find that childlike um, presence inside. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that that's something I work with my clients in our workshops and different things that I do, my half day events. And I'm sure there's something that you do when you're working with your clients. I mean, as a transformational and empowerment coach, that that sparks that joy for your clients. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, definitely. I, I think, you know, I like how you address that, you know, we sort of have lost track of that, that um, joy within us, that natural state. And so the work that I do with the women in the um, relationship coaching and the empowerment coaching is, um, that's the first step is really coming back home to yourself and finding, get, you know, getting my focus off my partner, off what's making me unhappy, off what's not working, bring the attention back to myself, knowing that it's my responsibility to make myself happy. And, you know, that was, that was what I learned um, through my life experience and yeah. being married to a man who struggled with alcoholism and depression and just yeah. coming through that experience, realizing how much I was depending on him for my sense of security, my sense of well-being. Yeah. 
so yeah, so I just learned like, oh yeah, it's really my responsibility. And so that's what I help my clients a lot with is just the first step is turning the focus back on yourself, understanding what do I have control over? What do I don't have control over? It's my job to make me happy. And how can I, how can I do that? And a lot of times, <clears throat> You know, we're just so, um, if we haven't allowed ourselves to do the things that make us happy, it's kind of, you know, we're so focused on other people or helping other people. It, you know, it takes a little bit of focusing to start to turn that attention back on ourselves and, and just even ask like, well, what would make me feel good right now? What do I like to do? I don't know. It's been such a long time since I even let myself do anything fun. Like, what would that look like for me? Mm -hmm. Oh, fun. Having fun. Mm -hmm. My partner and I played uh, after dinner the other night. We took a quarter and we made little touchdown thingies with our hands, goalposts, and we flung the, we flicked the quarter back and forth on the dining room table. We're in our 40s and 50s. We had fun. We had so much fun. And then we played two other games and it was like, oh yeah, this is so easy because we do it often. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, you know, I, and, and our listeners and viewers and wondering, you know, what is fun for some people? Like, what, what do people enjoy? And so there's one thought that I was having. And then the other thought that I wanted to come back to actually is, you know, I had you say the word joy out loud. You smiled so beautifully. It was like right there, right? So clearly it's a part of you. It's, it goes to that very inner core that you were talking about. So I invite you now, as much as it's no, no fun, to say the word pain and see where that lands. Mm -hmm. Pain. Yeah, it's interesting. I feel it like in the back of my throat and it kind of goes down into, into my heart, sort of in the back of my heart too, but not as deep as the joy went. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like the pain of not being who you are, not expressing like the back of the throat, you know, like the throat chakra, the heart chakra, mm -hmm. like not expressing and being who you are in the world. I think that's the, I think that's our, like the root of all our pain is just not being in our alignment with ourselves. Absolutely. And there's like a constriction, right? Mm -hmm. When you say the word pain, I could see it in your body. Mm -hmm. And um, it's funny. I have, I have friends and clients who are like, dang, Misha can tell a lot through zoom. That's kind of scary. <laughs> but it's like, I'm not, I'm not a psychic, but I can feel I'm an empath and a highly sensitive person. So I can feel a person's body and you know and kind of identify what someone's going through and i think that it's it's really important the reason i have had you say them out loud and i do what most of my guests is because it truly does make a difference in how we feel just saying the words mm -hmm. so when we can do what you're talking about which is get into alignment with our true self mm -hmm. we don't have to choose to be in pain mm -hmm. painful things are going to constantly come into our lives but we get to choose to acknowledge it, be aware of it, acknowledge it and process it and ask it to leave stage left. Mm -hmm. And no matter what we do, and you can agree or disagree with me, I would love to hear what you think about this. Both joy and pain are temporary. So when joy is here, I really want to embrace it. When pain is here, I want to say thanks for showing up. I understand. Okay, thanks a lot. Have a good day. Bye. But I, I, I acknowledge it. I talk to it. And then I go back to joy. <laughs> like That's what I want. So I don't know. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think it's, you know, a, you know, we're human. We're going to have all kinds of experiences. And so when something painful comes up, I think it's a question for me of, um, you know, is it just what's going on in my head? Anytime, like that's that, the emotional guidance system, you know, it's our emotions are just such, it's just information, it's valuable information. And so anytime I'm feeling any, any negative emotion, it's just um, a clue for me to notice and um, ask, well, you know, what, you know, we're sort of like, all, it begins with our thoughts and how we're focusing our attention is like, well, what thought am I thinking right now that's making me feel this way? Yeah. And to know that's not really how, that it's not really, um, you know, my true nature is joy, <clears throat> you know? And I think if we, um, if we then use that negative emotion as a, as a cue to, to remember that, okay, well, that's not how my inner being is feeling. If it was, then I wouldn't be feeling out of alignment with it, if that makes sense. It's like negative emotion. I, and I get a lot of this from, if you, if you guys are familiar with um, 
you ladies are familiar with Abraham Hicks. I listen to a lot of Abraham Hicks. I love, I love, love, love that. So it's, um, that helps me really, you know, expand my consciousness and keep it in the right place. But um, they would say that any negative emotion is you just pinching yourself off from source. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, just FYI, my audience is eclectic. So okay. you could, because even though we're in the private, fa we're streaming into the private Facebook group, which is 200 and I think 93 women from all around the world. I also do my Podbean account and we have people already listening there. And then my Facebook and then my YouTube, like it goes everywhere. So you can say okay. you guys, you can say you all, you can say you women, you can say you gorgeous men and women, whatever you want. Oh, LB, you beautiful you people. Binary. Yeah, y'all, we could say y'all. <laughs> but yeah, I totally, um, I love what you just said. And I'm curious, you know, I, well, I have two questions and so I have to figure out which one do I want to ask first. Um, in thinking about, so, so a big piece of what this show is about is identifying that duality in our life. And like you said, I love what you said about pinching away from source, you know, like closing yourself off a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. And yet there are people, myself included, who have been dealt some really challenging things in life. Mm -hmm. um, I won't go into all of them, but I am a victim of sexual assault and violence. And there are some other things that I've experienced. And yet I'm still experiencing more joy in my life than pain because I've done a lot to say, this is the way I want to approach my life. Mm -hmm. When you have a client come to you who's really hurting in their marriage mm -hmm. or really hurting in their relationship or really hurting because they left it or really hurting because whatever it is, mm -hmm. what is one tool that you have found to be a really helpful resource mm -hmm. for your clients? Mm -hmm. Besides, of course, working with us, right? When our clients come to us, they're getting that one-to-one -one attention. But yeah. what else can you say to these people? And I know you work specifically with women, but there are men who are also traumatized and challenged in a relationship and not sure whether to stay or to go. Mm -hmm. And that's your, your I think that's your <clears throat> program call, right? In that video training mm -hmm. video, should I stay or should I go? Should mm -hmm. I stay or should I go? Okay, anyway, so yeah, what is one piece that you might offer yeah. that yeah. devastated feeling? Yeah, and so, um, you know, dealing with pain, dealing with our emotions. And that, that's, I'm glad you asked that because then, you know, it's not just as simple as changing a thought. You know, we have real stuff that's happened to us that's created real pain. And, and it's so important for all of us to have some tools to just be able to embrace and process those emotions and just be with them. And I know that's what your whole show is all about um, to coexisting with all of that you yeah. know so there's a um there's a lot of tools that i do work with with my clients there's some specific processes to help you but mm -hmm. i think that's you know the the main point and maybe you all already know this but what we resist persists mm -hmm. that's <laughs> you know, right let's say it again what we resist persists mm -hmm. yes yeah, so even to just the first step is just to um, allow yourself to just even name what you're feeling. That's kind of the first step. It's a longer process, but um, the first step is just to, well, first of all, just notice when, when I'm feeling okay, I'm a aware of emotion. It, right? yeah. Like, um, yeah, just, oh, okay. Because sometimes we just, we, we're, you know, our natural inclination as a protection mechanism is to distract ourselves. It's perfectly, that's, you know, we do that naturally. It's like the yeah. part of the brain that wants us to protect us from feeling uncomfortable things. So, um, you know, so it, it does get louder if we like a child that's upset and screaming, if we don't pay attention to it, it's going to get louder. So when you start, when you notice I'm getting triggered, I'm feeling this um, pain, this whatever it is, that's uncomfortable, this negative emotion. And then just to see if you can take a breath, just allow that to be there for a moment, like, you know, be the loving parent to yourself, just sit with it, sit with yourself for a minute and just be like, okay, instead of like, you know, turning on the TV or getting online or eating the cookie or whatever you're going to do, you know, it's like, yep. okay, let's just stop 
take a breath. I'm just gonna, okay, you know, little one, little honey inside. I'm just, you know, come sit on my lap for a minute. I, you know, however you want to talk yeah. to yourself. Like, I'm just gonna sit with myself for a minute here. And I do a lot of the inner child work too with people, but, you know, just sit with yourself lovingly as a, as a, like, like a loving parent, like witnessing, just a witness from that higher witnessing place. And just even to name, if you can, if it's a specific thing that's happened, like I am feeling anxious because I don't know, you know, what's gonna happen with my job or I don't know, whatever the situation is. So it just naming, I feel this way because of this situation. And sometimes we can name it and sometimes we don't really know. It might just be more of a general feeling. And then, the, you know, we go deeper into the process to be able to sit with those feelings and, yeah. Uh, see what comes up. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's interesting. Um, I've said this before on other uh, episodes, but one of our listeners from the Podbean uh, podcast channel said, and I, I really like the way they phrase this, words themselves have no value to me. I resonate with the feeling of both pain and joy, but I keep myself grounded to stay in control of both feelings. Without one, you can't feel the other. And I so agree with that. I mean, that's like the, the biggest piece of why this coexistence is so important to acknowledge, mm -hmm. right? Because if I never felt pain, I wouldn't know how wonderful joy is. And if I didn't feel joy, I wouldn't know how awful or how great pain might be for me. I mean, there are some painful times I've had in my life that have actually made me who I am today. They've been incredible gifts mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not justifying or saying what's happened to me is okay. <laughs> I'm just saying I was able to see the benefit later of what happened to me and how to move forward with it, being mm -hmm. a part of my life, not defining myself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, there is a gift, like I was saying in my experience with my marriage, as painful as that was at the time, it was, a, I'm so grateful that I went through that because it, it, I grew so much from it. And, you know, I think that's, you know, that's the opportunity with whatever is creating pain for us is to also, it's just an opportunity to embrace ourselves and all and the parts of us that are hurting and to come into deeper um wholeness and acceptance and love how can i be there for myself through this Absolutely. and it doesn't have to define your life and i really give you a lot of credit for you know being able to not let it define you because then you know that then that's our choice you know how how are we gonna how are we gonna respond to this and um you know yeah. where, where ultimately we're gonna you know keep our focus so. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting. I know we have um, we have a lot of viewers and listeners, both in the Facebook, YouTube, Podbean, that um, they have gone through a tremendous amount of pain, mm -hmm. tremendous amount of pain. Mm -hmm. And some is physical pain, some is emotional pain, some might be spiritual pain, um, some may be personally caused, some may be circumstantial. Um, and I think that the biggest piece of what we're talking about is when we are aware mm -hmm. and we acknowledge, we can get into action, healthy action, mm -hmm. right? And so um, working with someone like you, like me on a one-to-one -one basis or in our groups allows for that support. And then the honesty about this is what sucks in my life. Like I did a, I did a workshop about um, three weeks ago. It was a six week workshop just ended and I was working with these attorneys and I started this, one of the sessions It's like, okay, we're gonna do something different today. And they're like, really? I'm like, yeah, you get one minute to vent. You can bitch, cuss, say anything you want. One minute to say anything. None of them could do it for a full minute. And, and then they got another minute to say what was positive and flowing and they were so ready, they diffused mm -hmm. all of that tension in the vent, barely even getting to 40 seconds each mm -hmm. and were able to fill up more than a minute of joy. Whereas in previous times, it was so hard to find the joy. So the fact that they were able to take that moment to vent it all out, mm -hmm. cleared space 
for the joy. I was like, damn, I'm going to do that more often with my clients. <laughs> so I'm giving that tip to you. But to anybody Great. listening or, you know, watching, it's like, just give it a shot. Just pow, vent all you want, fantasize, you know, shitty stuff, whatever, say it all and then go, now what feels good in your life it's a great process i know i, I do a lot of mind body work too i teach qigong if you guys are familiar oh, right. with qigong, oh, energy healing that kind of stuff and i think we do we need to find ways there's some a lot of specific qigong exercises for emotional detox for just releasing that energy it's just you know pain uh, physical pain is just stuck energy in the body but um yeah it's that same idea of um embrace it and let it go <laughs> yeah and it's not who you are it's not the whole of who you are and so learning how to not um focus on it not be attached to it embrace it ex you know and, and release it yeah embrace yeah. it release it just like ch a child you know they don't you know, they don't hold on to stuff very long. Emotions, they, they come, they come and, you know, they can be so upset and five seconds later be smiling and laughing. So it's like, you know, just letting it move through. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and you know, the layers as they come up from experiences and just as an opportunity to just keep loving yourself. Yeah. Releasing. I love it. I love it, Risa. And I, I really feel like your, your clients get so much from working with you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So I'm excited. Love you to tell our audience more of who you are, what you do. And I know you have a five day video challenge coming up or video training, excuse me, coming up in your Facebook group mm -hmm. and you work primarily with women, correct? Correct. Okay. So go ahead and share yeah. uh, so, that information. So my focus right now is on helping uh, women who are unhappy in their relationships get clear on what they want if if they're if they want to try and see if they can improve their relationships um, there's a process that we go through to help them determine if it can be improved or not and ultimately just to get clear on what direction they want to go in their lives if they want to stay in the relationship or not so um, yeah it's been a rough 2020 was a rough year for a lot of relationships so I really felt called to um, to focus on this area in this past year. And I know that's, that's that was my life experience too. So I have a lot, I feel like I can um, relate to with that. Mm -hmm. And so I have a Facebook group. It's, um, I guess you'll maybe have the link in the, in the comments. Um, the should I stay or should I go relationship support group for women who want to feel empowered in love and in life. Mm -hmm. Taking our power back, getting clear on who we are, what we need, what we want to do. We are the creators of our own life and happiness and allowing our natural state of joy to exist. Mm -hmm. And um, I do have a wonderful training. If this um, uh, is an area that anybody wants support with, it's going to be really transformational next week, the week of January 25th. I'll be on live in my Facebook group every day uh, from 12 to 12.45 Eastern time, uh, 12 noon Eastern. And that is going to be five keys to discover if you can make your relationship work. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. And I imagine if they find that they can't make the relationship work, they could probably call you for some one-to-one -one coaching so they Absolutely. can get through that. Yes. And then if people want more support, we can, we can get on a complimentary relationship clarity session call and then um, see if it makes sense. If people want to do more work together, I, that's, um, my focus right now is just the private one-on-one -on -one coaching support for people. It's been really valuable, help free up a lot of people. Myself, starting with myself, <laughs> and then helping <laughs> others too. So I, I love being able to support people with that. So if that calls to you, go ahead and click those uh, those links below and jump on. I'd be happy to happy to connect with you that way. Yeah, and we'll definitely for those listening on the podcast and for those in the. Facebook group, I'll put that link in shortly in the comments and then anybody watching the replay on YouTube or Facebook or listening on Podbean, I'll have the links in the description of the, uh, it's all like all this tech stuff. I can't, I need somebody to just do it all in one spot, but it doesn't, it, we got too many platforms, so that's okay. We've had a lot of listeners today in our um, Podbean podcast. Um, really, there's some people who've experienced some incredible uh, trauma and PTSD and um, and actually they're connecting with each other right now, which is wonderful. I, I'm glad to see that they're connecting. And um, I want to thank you, Risa Gall, for being here with me today, Misha Saffron on the 
passing joy around the world by means of discussing the coexistence of joy, pain, and truth. And um, I, we're going to sign off here shortly. I want to thank everybody for listening. Feel free to pass on the word if you enjoyed what you heard today. And also, I uh, will post the link to my YouTube channel. You can like or, and subscribe. That would be awesome because I'd love to be able to change the name of my YouTube channel. Um, but anyways, thank you, Risa, very, very much. Good luck with your video training next week. I know it's going to be phenomenal. And um, yeah, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Misha. Thank you so much for having me. Great to be with all of you today. Big love, ma, big joy. Yep, we'll say goodbye to our listeners and then we'll say goodbye to our goodbye listeners and then say goodbye to our Facebook group people and 